Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to continue back on the Key Concepts video series where I take some IP written key concepts and give you a broad overview to help supplement your textbooks. Okay doc, so in this video, what we're going to be doing is looking at BGP Neighbours and with that said, let's kick on, let's do it. Okay now before we start some configurations, let's look at some key points to understanding BGP Neighbours. So the first thing to realise is that BGPs are typically discovered via manual configuration. You can do it dynamically, but that's outside the scope of this video. So what you want to be thinking about is when you're configuring your BGP neighbours, you're actually going to be typing the IP address of the adjacent router with which you want to peer. This is kind of the opposite of what happens in, say, OSPF when you just activate interfaces and if certain conditions match, like they're on the same subnet, they will just dynamically form. In BGP, this is different. Next, the network command actually does advertise networks in BGP. This is again unlike IGPs whereby in OSPF or EIGRP, when you type in the network command, you're not actually specifying the network with which you're going to advertise, you're specifying a range of IP addresses and if on that interface you have an IP address within that range, it will be configured to operate the IGP such as OSPF or EIGRP. In BGP, this actually is a true sounding command in that when you type in network, this is the actual network you're going to be advertising. Now the next one is often one that people find pretty confusing because it seems kind of counterintuitive if you've always just been studying IGPs like OSPF and EIGRP and that is, is that BGP peers, i.e. BGP neighbours, do not need to be directly connected and this is especially common within IBGP so just remember that, okay? And the last point which I want to impress upon you is that BGP does not replace IGPs BGP, particularly IBGP, will often use an IGP like OSPF and it will effectively piggyback on top of that to get connectivity and that's going to tie in quite closely with the third point, meaning that BGP speakers often don't need to be directly connected. This might seem confusing at first, but as we go through these series, this series of videos, this should slowly start to come together and you'll see that IBGP, in particular with IGPs, actually has quite a synergistic relationship and they work well together. So with that said, let's kick on and look at some configurations then, okay? Okay, so the best way to highlight this, I thought, would be to create two identical topologies one at the top with OSPF and the other at the bottom with BGP. We've got some common networks in black and each router has got a loopback address corresponding to its router number. So router 1's got 1.1.1.1, router 2's got 2.2.2.2, you get the drift. Okay, so let's imagine well, we're configuring a neighbour relationship in the top topology within OSPF. How would we do that? Well, there's two ways you can do it. The first way would be to use the network command and you would specify a range with that network command and if you had an interface within that range, with an IP address within that range should I say, that would therefore be activated for OSPF and it would start sending out its multicast and its hello messages trying to discover and negotiate that relationship. So if we did that on both sides, we would have OSPF establish the neighbourship between router 1 and router 2 or alternatively, which what I think is actually the cleaner way to do it is just to go into the interface and type in IP OSPF one whatever the process ID is plus the area on both sides once that's done we would then establish that neighbour relationship this is not this case at all with BGP with BGP in the case of router 1 we'd have to log into router 1 and then specify the IP address of router 2 and likewise to form the neighbourship fully, you'd have to go into router 2 and then specify the IP address of router 1. So let's go and look and see how that configuration looks like, okay? Okay, so let's do some configuration then. If we go to router 1, all we need to do is do router BGP and then specify the autonomous system number. Let's say we are in autonomous system number 1, okay? Next we need to give the IP address of the neighbour with which we're trying to peer. So we'll say neighbour and router 2's IP address is 1.2. Remote AS. Now the remote AS, this is going to tell BGP whether it's going to follow IBGP rules or EBGP rules and they're very, very different. If I type in the same autonomous system as what I'm using, i.e. 1, we're going to be following IBGP rules. If I chose a different one, like say 4, we'll start using eBGP. In this case, we'll just use iBGP, so I'll just do that. And that is all we need to do. 
And if I go to this one, let's do the same process, okay? So if we just do router BGP, and this will be one, and the neighbor's going to be 192, the IP address of router one this time, and the remote AS is that. And now we've got our BGP relationship up, and if we do a show IP BGP sum, we'll see we've actually got our neighbor right there. So that's the way you actually would begin to configure the neighbor relationship. It's manual, it's not like automatic and dynamic discovery, so that's what you need to be aware of. But the next thing I really want to talk to you about is that network command. How is it different between OSPF and EIGRP, for example, and BGP? Well, let's talk about that now. Okay, so let's do this configuration between routers 2 and routers 3 in the top topology running OSPF and let's look at this network command. Now what I will say is that people often make the mistake of thinking that this command, this network command is actually advertising the network. So they see the network here is 192.168.2.0 slash 24, therefore they infer that the wildcard mask must be 0.0.0.255. The reality is, all we're doing here with the network command is telling OSPF which interfaces to activate. So, we've got an IP address of 192.168.1.2, so if I actually do this, and I put in, or rather 2.1, we're looking at this one, my fault. 2.1 and I do a quad zero wildcard mask, which means exactly this address. What I've effectively done is I've said, activate OSPF on any interface you see, which has exactly the address 192.168.2.1, which is going to match ethernet 01. Therefore, what's going to happen is ethernet 01 is going to start sending out OSPF hello packets. So let's do the same thing on router three, okay? Ritter OSPF1 and we'll do network and we'll do 192.168.2.2 with the quad zeros, area zero. Okay, and that's us up. So let's see, we actually did not advertise that slash 24 mask with the network command, but is it still correct? Show IP OSPF uh, ints brief. And you can see that we're actually still advertising it with the slash 24 because the network command has nothing to do with the actual network we're advertising. It's purely about interface activation. So let's compare that with BGP then, shall we? Okay, now before we actually look at this network command, let's finish off this neighbor relationship between two and three then. So what we'll do is we'll actually configure eBGP this time. So we'll do router BGP1 and we'll say the neighbor's address is 192.168.2.2 and it's remote AS is a different one, it's going to be in remote AS2. Okay, so let's do the mirror on this one here. So do router BGP2 and do the neighbor 192.168.2.1 remote AS1. That should be eBGP we're getting now. There we go, so our adjacency is now up. So let's look at this network command. So you'll see that we've got this IP address if I can type John Boy, that would help. <laughs> okay, so we've got the 1.1.1.1 slash 32. If we go into router BGP and we try to advertise that with a mask of just say, let's try to do it with a slash 24 mask, right? It's going to take the command, but what you're going to see is show IP BGP. We're not advertising any into BGP, and you'll see that over here. We're not going to see anything. Nothing there for BGP because when we're actually advertising with the network command in BGP, we're actually advertising that network. So we actually really need to specify the correct information. We can't be lazy like in EIGRP, just do network 0000. This won't work here. You actually need to give a network which is in your routing table. So show IP root. You can see that we've actually got 1.1.1.1 and the mask is actually a slash 32. So if we do router BGP and try again, what we need to do is do all the ones and do a mask of a slash 32. Now we've done that, show IP BGP, but actually now inject it into BGP. And if we slide over all the way to router three, we should now see that route. And we now see it there. So that's a quite a distinct difference between OSPF and EIGRP and BGP is that the network command actually advertises networks and with OSPF it's just about 
interface activation, same EIGRP. So the next thing I want to do is just quickly talk about this idea of forming neighbor adjacencies between routers which are not directly connected. So let's look at that then. Okay, now let's presuppose we had this topology here, but we're only running an interior gateway protocol like EIGRP or OSPF. Let's say we wanted to learn this prefix of all the fives on this router here. What we would need to do would be to build a neighbor relationship between directly connected neighbors and effectively just chain them all together, okay? That way, that router 5 could advertise it through, say for example, OSPF, through all these directly connected neighbors and it would get to router 1 and that way the route could be learned. In BGP, however, there is no such requirement. We can actually have a BGP neighbor relationship between these two here, even though they're not directly connected. And the caveat is that they've got to be not re not directly connected, but they have to be reachable. So how would router 1 be able to reach router 5? Well, this is what I was talking about and I think it was point 4 that I made at the start of the video, is that BGP tends to ride on top of an IGP. So what we would do is we'd actually run an IGP, say for example, EIGRP between all these routers and then just run BGP here and just run BGP here and we could just pair these two with BGP and leave these all out of it completely. So let's just go and look at how that would actually look in terms of configuration then. So let's go down here. Okay, now for brevity, I've already pre-configured routers two, three and four with EIGRP. So let's go and do router one then. So we'll do router EIGRP one, no auto summary and we'll put the 10 network in and we'll also put all the ones in. Same again in router 5, we'll do conf t router eigrp1 no auto summary network, put the 10 network in and we'll also do all the 5s. So now if we check our written table, we should see that we've actually got reachability to 1.1.1.1. Let's ping it. And because we actually have reachability, that is enough for BGP to form that neighbourship. We don't need to be directly connected, we just need reachability. So let's go and configure BGP then. And we do router BGP 50 and we'll do neighbour, we'll do all the fives for router fives and make it IBGP. And we'll do neighbour, all the fives. And don't worry about this command too much, it's just saying we're peering on the loopbacks. So let's go here and do the mirror effectively. And we do conf t router bgp50 neighbor is oh, all the ones and it's ibgp neighbor all the ones and we're updating from the loopback. And there now we have our bgp adjacency between routers 1 and 5 and if you actually notice if we go to say router 2 show run section bgp it's not running bgp at all but we still have that relationship so what we could actually do is let's just say we've got let's create a loopback of 99 ip address and make it a slash 24 mask and we'll go and advertise that into bgp so we just do a network 99 99 99 0 with a mask of a slash 24, I'm advertising that in. So if we go to router 5, oh, give it a wee second. There we go. We can now see that router 5 can see that route advertised by BGP, but you'll notice none of the other routers will have that because none of them are running BGP. So it's pretty much this little route that both them are sharing, but nobody else knows about. So again, if we go to router 5 and do a show IP route, we can see that route, but if we try to ping it, we actually can't. And that is because we're going to send that packet to router 4 and router 4 has got absolutely no idea where to send the 99 because it doesn't have it. So I'll leave this little conundrum for now, but if you want to know the answer to that, watch my video on MPLS BGP Freecore and you can find out how you actually get around this problem. But I thought I'd just highlight it just to show you just how quirky and maybe counterintuitive that BGP is compared to your IGPs. So let's recap. Okay, so BGP peers are discovered via manual configuration. You actually type in the IP address of your adjacent peer. The network command actually advertises networks unlike 
just specifying interface activation, BGP peers do not need to be directly connected, especially common in IBGP. And the way to do that is remembering that IBGPs are not replaced by BGPs. They actually work together with this kind of symbiotic relationship and BGP tends to run over IGPs like OSPF. Okie doke. So that's the end of the video. The next one will be on BGP loop prevention and that's it. So thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon.